The atmosphere out in Oregon was a little bit different. It was a bunch of bow hunters getting together with a passion for hunting. And we got to talk a lot about different styles of bow hunting and the different ways each and every one of us would do it. And we learned a lot and got to know friends even better than we did. It's breaking up, we have bulls screaming everywhere. I mean, I, I could, every time I blew a freaking call, they'd run in. But, um, but now it's kind of calmed down. They kind of broke up in their little bunches. We still got plenty of elk and all that. But uh, they're hitting the water pretty good and that kind of thing. That's still going to be our best bets are on those, on those water holes, I think. But. All right. What's that? I said oh, okay. one road in, one road out. All right. Out. Well, we will see you when you get here. Yeah, we'll be there in about 7.30ish. Yeah, okay. So, Sounds good. Okay. See you in a little bit. Right bye. Okay, bye. Can't tell where my bubble was, but hit center. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> wow. Well, we just rolled into elk camp here in Oregon. And we got in here after dark, so went ahead and took a couple practice shots in the dark with the headlights. And don't look like the airline screwed anything up on the bow, so we're good to go in the morning. We get up at 6 a.m. Well, we get up at 5. We're leaving here at 6. Uh, everything's ready, it looks like. Clothes are laid out. Arrows are ready. Bows tuned up. And we're ready to all cut. How many waters are there on this place? Oh, okay, so probably about... I've got 10 miles. You got 10? How many acres we got here? Uh, almost 11,000. Oh, okay. It's a little bigger than I thought then. We'll get them out. We'll be patient this morning and... set up in our blind and the cows and a big bull has already beat us to it so we're trying to figure out how to get there because we're not going to be able to call them off them cows so we're sort of screwed it's going to be a spot and stalk and hope we can sneak in there well the only possibility is to try to go around that wall is right over the hill right there i mean well, they'll, they'll probably be there but if we can go around and get the wind right we might maybe get lucky
Last night when we walked out, we finally found our elk. They were just right here below us, about 50 yards from where we parked. Maybe we should have just parked in the ranger last night. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go back to the same blind. We got a bunch of elk starting to come in at Estridge. They're starting to, starting to bugle a lot more, and it's a little warmer today. So we're getting in a little early again to hope like heck that those elk will come to our water hole this afternoon.
You know, we were standing uh, when you took me in there the other way. On top? Yeah, they were right there. Mm -hmm. Basically, they 90 yards that, from the blue line and yeah, up that way. that way a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's day six and this morning we come in or other side of the ranch from where we've been hunting and uh, we got into them a little bit. They weren't real worked up or nothing. They were mostly just moving the herds and, and talking to each other and stuff like that. And they went up on a bluff and we found some water right below that bluff. So we're going to try to sit there tonight. These elk have been moving late at night. So we're going to be probably another mile farther up into the mountains from where we've been sitting. So we're hoping to catch them a little earlier coming down. Uh, we gotta try something new. It's been a grind, but we're still out here and we're still looking to stick one tonight. His butt was at 45, his front shoulder was at 47. And uh, I had it from my 40 yard pin high, my 50 yard pin low. But I'll be honest, I was pretty damn nervous. We had a lot of stuff around us. And I sat on my 40 yard pin on his heart. And it was supposed to be about midway and I just messed up. So I gotta blame it on nerves this time. 